Hi friends. So today our uh, topic in risk based engineering is risk based engineering applications. We have discussed in previous lecture uh, the one application that is uh, risk based engineering in support of life extension and regulatory approval and uh, that uh, have, uh, we learned that how aging studies are, uh, uh, how uh, PRA is used uh, for uh, plant modeling and then how uh, the failure data they reflect that which is the important component which is uh, from risk significance of the component comes out and then this risk significant components or reliability significant components uh, they, uh, they show their importance and that gives an input, not exactly the uh, data itself, but, but input uh, to the agencies, okay, the, these are the system we should be replacing, these are the system we should be repairing, and these are the update, new insights, new, uh, so all those things, and that's how the plant, uh, plant is further validated, um, and then uh, this, uh, this uh, results um, are used, for requalification of the plant and I think the risk based approach uh, has worked effectively there. Now we are today we are discussing the risk monitor. Risk monitor is nothing but um, it shows the instantaneous value of the risk like I have done the probabilistic risk assessment, I have got a core damage frequency um, but that is coming from uh, status of various uh, system structures and component that build the model, uh, they were the basic inputs. But if there is a change in status of few system or components, then the risk will change. It may not change also because uh, it depends on sensitivity of these components to the risk component. So, uh, but then a, uh, then a uh, operating uh, staff uh, should know uh, the key, uh, if I do this configuration, uh, if I change the configuration, um, uh, whether there will be any increase in risk and if it is not then it is not an increase in risk or even if I am given a time that uh, I can do this job for 8 hours after that the risk will be 1% increase and all it is very useful in decision making in control room scenario. The traditional approach to do this is a technical specification document is there and we have to follow that strictly I mean uh, any operating staff they have to, they have to comply with the uh, that document. Uh, in this document all the uh, conditions are, uh, all the conditions have been given and uh, the plant has to follow this thing. Uh, but the only thing is it is uh, prescriptive in nature. I mean uh, whatever uh, we have to, it is like a rule base, we have to use it the, uh, that way only. But even if you feel that nothing is going to happen, because the, the so in risk monitor that experience has been captured and it will give. So uh, what happens is with operator, one additional input has come from the risk monitor in support of the decision. Um, uh, this particular uh, risk monitor uh, thing uh, module we are discussing uh, only R&D component of that. So how the model was built. Okay, so we will remain in that R&D area. So uh, let us say uh, introduction, uh, traditional approach I told there is a uh, technical specification stipulations and one has to, operating staff has to follow where it uh, stipulates limiting condition for operation towards ensuring safety or even maintenance intervals and uh, surveillance intervals that it provides for safety system. Um, so, uh, what is new? New is risk monitor. Actually, risk monitor is not new. In ma many nuclear power plant, this is uh, uh, used in control rooms. Uh, we, we can have the statistics in the ne our data on the next slide. Um, so, uh, but then for the plant which is not having risk monitor for, uh, for them, it will be a new perspective actually. So, um, so risk monitors are, uh, uh, they, they present the result of risk in real time environment. Um, the, this is basically, uh, this sentence requires some, some uh, del deliberation, why? Because uh, whatever cut set we embedded into the risk monitor, it, it operates based on those uh, uh, cut sets. 
if i if i change the status of one of the cut set that will that will get reflected uh, over uh, on that period of time so in that time in that uh, from that point of view it is a real time number one number two uh, many risk monitors they use the uh, probability demand failure probability demand failure probability uh, as a statement of failure uh, there are you know, it is basically uh, it is not having uh, any correlation if i put it as a constant probably but if i have to connect it to the uh, time then i have to give failure rate so that uh, uh, that probably for this risk monitor there was something new this was done to this run, uh, risk monitor uh, because you know uh, we should be connecting failure rate uh, to the uh, model of the plant or risk monitor and that's how the cut set should be built <coughs> Uh, at any time uh, point of time risk monitor provide the risk estimate for a given set of equipment condition it reflects the current status of the plant for example if one of my diesel generator was uh, under maintenance so that means if i want to estimate uh, and my criteria is two out of three diesel failure is a uh, system failure like emergency power supply failure then that particular thing has been, has has to be apportioned that out of 3 1 is not there so um, and that should be stipulated and it should be revisited so a simulation is carried out uh, and and nowadays these studies we don't have to do on the plant uh, there are um, simulators that are available and uh, now you, you are more free having simulator and uh, you can do more and more parametric studies uh, to see the impact of Uh, the uh, various configuration of the plant and systems um, this case study uh, presents the experience component as i mentioned initially uh, and the risk monitor is called uh, risk based operation and maintenance management uh, system because it 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 takes, uh, takes care of operations also in terms of control room decision making it advises the maintenance staff also in terms of uh, failure rate uh, of the component because finally we need a database and finally each component has to be so uh, something like reliability centered maintenance or risk centered here it will be a risk centered maintenance whether i should take out this component for, out of service uh, and i want to get guidance uh, so uh, along with my uh, traditional approach uh, what uh, what uh, texpex says of course uh, at the outset uh, Uh, one has to follow the technical specification but if it is a planned job then this type of input can be given submitted to the regulator that we want to do this but according to the technical specification uh, it is not permitted so we are having this we are making this compensating provision can we do that so regulator might approve so in the third party like uh, uh, regulatory oversight is required for the, uh, making a decision because as on today the policy is go by uh, the technical specification only okay a uh, role of pra and deterministic uh, we have discussed uh, uh, over a period of time uh, but pra provides a complete integrated model of the plant that we know pra provides uh, the quantitative quantified statement of risk that is core damage frequency at uh, in level one level that is P pra level 1 level 2 and level 3 uh, level 3 is risk to the member of public level 2 uh, is uh, uh, release get uh, risk of release uh, out of the plant so source term you can say frequency uh, in a way uh, this trend uh, tends as a testimony to growing application of risk bear approach uh, so you, uh, as i was mentioning first uh, risk monitor was built in 1998 uh, since then the deployment of risk monitor in nuclear power plant has rapidly grown to 110 Uh, there is a reference in my book that is reference number 22 in fact there is a list at the end of this presentation uh, you can refer that list if it is not there we'll submit that list okay um so uh, this trend has grown and it has become matured now okay and here also we are giving the r&d component of the uh, what uh, updates and all we have done here so now we have this uh, the risk monitor that is risk based operation and maintenance management system and in short it is called rbo mms okay. and uh, how the development work was uh, taken up uh, uh, the development of the project involved a task which provides uh, scope objective 
updating of analysis, what are resources required, uh, list of initiating events, and then identifying areas for implementation of uh, uh, implementation and limitation of the tool. It is very important for any project that uh, advantages one must identify. But limitation of that particular tool also should be identified and spelled out in the beginning itself. Then if any R&D component is there to, uh, to eliminate those limitations that can be done or uh, the result goes with those uh, like uh, various assumptions we make. Uh, these assumptions have to be validated using the sensitivity analysis so that we know the impact of those assumptions okay, at the plant level or at, even at the system level. So this kind of um, recursive exercises should go on uh, so that there is a transparency when we develop a new model or method. Development of software. So software validation verification is a, another uh, issue. So that has to be met and uh, it should be basically uh, following the codal requirement of uh, uh, how it meets the criteria. Of course, we are not putting it or uh, we are not connecting it to the plant because uh, in, uh, in safety critical system uh, for software there is uh, some sort of a think back type of approach, uh, especially uh, even if you talk about the digital system. So, uh, but then if it is operating on standalone mode and if it is operating as an uh, advisory uh, system, then it is good. So, software has to come true on that thing. Evaluation of the tool for evaluating the defense in depth. Now, uh, de deterministic uh, approach has to be complied in, in uh, whatever. So, it has to be mapped on deterministic approach. If any protocol or procedural changes have to be carried out, uh, that has to be done. Okay. After that only risk monitor can find entry into the control room. And since we uh, discuss that there are many risk monitors operating in the uh, at, you know various levels, national, international level, that means the, even that procedure also got consolidated. Our national administrative agreements or uh, uh, arrangements are required for implementation of the tool. Proposal for a stage of uh, lab trial training also has to be, normally it is done on simulator actually because most of the plants they have a simulator. Major activities that updating of the original module because we have level 1 plus PSA. Uh, level 1 PSA is core damage frequency but for certain events like if I think I, I should go into details of LOCA what happens. I will take that particular event from uh, from level 1 core damage frequency and I will convert what are the plant damage states then I will go for level 2 and in level 3 what are the uh, uh, from level 2 what are the release frequency and that I will map it on the level 3 and I will see what is the consequence in the public domain. So for that particular event so that is called level 1 plus study that means there are component of level 2 and level 3 also. So for uh, for one plant this was there and for the same plant uh, RBO MMS was developed. Then dynamic feature I was uh, telling you even data need to be as it is uh, uh, the data available from the PRA cannot be used because in PRA many times we use demand failure probability that need to be converted into uh, if you want to bring in the aspect of dynamic uh, you have to convert into um, uh, dynamic statement using the because uh, time based component should come so uh, failure rate is a time based component failure rate per hour uh, so our frequency per year so that component should come so the, we have to uh, a simple model like uh, demand failure probability is, is equal to half of uh, lambda t so that kind of or whatever uh, is available at disposal we should use otherwise the use of risk monitor will be very limited then sur surveillance test interval uh, updating uh, should be done uh, because that again requires, uh, you know, um, if any change, changes is there in service test interval and any data has to be changed uh, for allowable outage time or service interval, that can be reflected. Then core damage frequency, uh, uh, as I said, the reference cut sets are there, uh, but then uh, when we do uh, CDF evaluation over a period of time, that, that also should meet the criteria of dynamic uh, evaluation. And, uh, at the end of the day, this is the uh, GUI graphics uh, user interface uh, for the RVBOMS uh, that is risk based operation and maintenance management system. Uh, these trials were carried out um, by, by removing uh, some uh, equipment out of service um, and there, there we can see the risk increase. In certain condition we had only uh, we got the risk reduction from the reference level, level also. Uh, because uh, because here 
uh, this was an experimental thing would have been done uh, to suppose uh, it's called parametric study. If we add these features and all risk, so risk increase, risk decrease, and date wise it has been uh, given uh, this simulation. And uh, so once we get this risk profile, uh, if I want to make any change, and if I get this projection, small projection that is increase in risk, uh, if it is less than one percent, I can go ahead if provided by the uh, our doc, uh, our rules and regulation. I can go ahead with this job. And uh, this will also tell the time limit. So time, for seven hours, I can go. I can. So this helps plants continuous operation. Even though it was a safety equipment, uh, I had eight hours or nine hours. I could um, mend. I could repair it, put it back uh, to operation, and that's how I got. Maintenance. So my plant uh, uh, remained in operation. So whatever plant you are interested, uh, you can you can see a figure. You can see systems, different systems are there. Um, you can open a tree here itself, uh, ECCS, uh, one just say class 3 system and all. And then various uh, um, initiating events are there, uh, list of initiating, all those things. And whatever we do, how, what is, how it is playing out on the field, uh, our selection of component, its status, uh, probability, how we can change that, it can be done on this screen. And we can, uh, using a calculator, we can show the so new, event, new event will come and uh, it will show what is the effect of this thing. And uh, yeah, so these are the uh, accounts for uh, operating this whole risk monitor. So in short, you found a way to, uh, in a dynamic manner, to see the risk level of the plant. And this is possible when we had a probabilistic risk assessment of the um, model of the plant. So uh, and then we have this core damage frequency estimate. So what is the risk matrix here, what we saw in the risk monitor. So, uh, so we have this core damage uh, statement, the median value uh, will come out over here and then we will have upper bound and lower bound also we can monitor that means we are able to characterize uncertainty also. Uh, provision for obtaining uh, the instantaneous value of CDF is in the form of trend of uh, stop that we saw in the GI, uh, GUI that we saw there. <coughs> so uh, we we know the um, statement of risk. You saw the variability among that, uh, and the bounds are from five percent to nine. So ninety percent is the ninety percent bounds are there. Uh, it is ninety percent. Uh, bound and it starts 5% and 95%. So, in between area is covered, and that is how we have this statement of core damage frequency. And uh, then, decision making uh, for international guidelines or national guidelines, uh, if they are available, it can be used. Like for the new old plant, the target core damage frequency should not be more than 1 into, or 1 into 10 to the minus 4 should be the target value. If you have one reference core damage frequency is 1.1, and so that should be seen in the our risk monitor. And then uh, by by so for old plant, for new plant, of course it is uh, 1 into 10 to the power minus 5. So change in any uh, increase, let's say, should be less than CDF should be less than 1 percent. So what we have is uh, even the operating protocol also and is decision making protocol. Uh, in real time scenario and if uh, the control room is empowered for with this kind of framework uh, then the freedom is more and uh, there could be uh, potential saving in terms of uh, throughput uh, in terms of uh, plant transient because every transient uh, uh, the plant experiences um, there is a because there is something called anticipated transient uh, uh, transient without scram. So this kind of initiating events can be reduced actually. So thank you very much. This was the second case study that we have taken up and uh, we will go ahead with the third and all. Thank you.